fourth edition of Interchange, the most widely used and the most successful English course in the world. This state-of-the-art software is designed to help you maximize your teaching effectiveness as you move seamlessly through each lesson, incorporating video, audio, and even online resources, all with the click of a mouse. Visit the link below or contact your Cambridge University Press representative for a demonstration today. Interchange 2, Fourth Edition, Unit 15, Part 2. This video will include words in English and their meanings in English and Arabic. Also, PowerPoint presentation for the grammar, answer for the questions, and explanation for the lesson. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 7. Disaster Catastrophe 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 Couch Sofa Cushion Cushion Pillow Pillow P -p -p -sound. Pillow 8. Words of exercise number 8 Cheat Cheated Cheated 10. Cool off to become less strong. Brand new, completely new. Brand new, new, and Americans say also new, brand new, completely new, completely new. Twelve, bulletin board. Rumor, rumor. Information that may not be true. Information that may not be true. Breakup. In the romantic relationship. Meanwhile, at the same time, something else is happening. Skip. Miss. Willing. Ready. Prepared. Damage. Harm. Break. Gossip. Information about other people's private lives. Gossip. Information about other people's private lives. About. A. Silent. And the stress on the bath sound. About. Repair the damage. Make everything all right. Repair the damage. Make everything all right. Confront. To face. To challenge. To challenge in a direct way. Turn out. Dalma. 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 A difficult problem. A difficult problem. Problem. O as a sound in American. British. Problem. Problem. British. American. Problem. Destroyed, extremely worried or upset. Firm, strong and determined. Firm, strong and determined. Work things out to find a solution. Work out to find a solution. Work things out. Because we have work out, do exercise. But work things out to find a solution, to solve a problem. Now we have finished unit 15. This is level pre-intermediate 3, level 9. So, we are going to talk in English, no Arabic. The grammar lesson will be by an American teacher, Mr. Kyle Ralphson. His channel is Kyle Ralphson, also English Brain Channel. He has two channels. They are the favorite channels for English for Arab channels. Wish you all good luck. 7. Perspectives I felt terrible, terrible, too bad. Listen to people talk about recent pretty comments. Pretty comments. Then check through the best suggestion for each one. Here, look at the picture. What do you see? 
A young man is sitting on a couch. He's sitting on a couch. This is a couch, a sofa. A cup, a glass, a glass of juice. He spilled juice. He spilled juice on the couch. He spilled juice on the couch. Listen. Page 102, exercise 7, perspectives. I felt terrible. Part A. Listen to people talk about recent predicaments. Then check the best suggestion for each one. What a disaster. I spilled juice on my parents' new couch. They weren't home, so I just turned the cushions over. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You should have cleaned it immediately. You should have offered to buy them a new couch. I forgot my best friend's birthday. I felt terrible, so I sent him a text to apologize. What would you have done? I would have called him right away. I would have sent him a nice birthday present. I would have invited him out for a meal. So here, check the best suggestion for each one, the best solution. What a disaster. What a big problem. I spilled juice on my parents' new couch. They weren't home, so I just turned the cushions over. So here, because I spilled juice on the couch, he turned the cushions over. He turned the cushions upside down, as if nothing happened. What should he have done? He should have told them about it. He should have cleaned it immediately. He should have offered to buy them a new couch. So what is the best suggestion? I think, I think, he should have cleaned it immediately. Yeah, if, if someone cleaned it immediately, nothing gonna happen. I forgot, I forgot my best friend's birthday, forgot. British, forgot. American, forgot. Oh, as a sound. I forgot my best friend's birthday. I felt terrible. Terrible? Too bad. So I sent him a text to apologize. I sent him a message. I sent him in the past. The verb send. The past sent. I sent him a text to apologize. To say, I'm sorry. What would you have done? I would have called him right away. I would have sent him a nice birthday present. I would have invited him out for a meal. So what is the best solution? Any answer is correct, of course. I would have sent him a nice birthday present. I would have called him right away. I would have sent him a nice birth birthday present. And I would have invited him for a meal. So I can do the three. B. Pair work. Compare with a partner. Do you agree with each other? Do you agree or you don't agree? Do you accept or you don't accept these solutions? Exercise number eight. Grammar focus. Past models. Page 103. Exercise eight. Grammar focus. Past modals. Use would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about actions in the past. What should I have done? You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it. What would you have done? I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him a text. 
past models. Use would have, would have, or should have, plus past participle, plus PP. To give opinions or suggestions, to suggest something, to tell your opinions about actions in the past, about something that happened in the past. And of course we use this when we regret about something. It's finished and you can't do anything. Something in the past happened and now you, you have a regret. You regret it. You are sorry for this. What should you have done? You should have told them about it. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have hidden it. So this is for example the example of the boy who spilled the juice on the couch. So it's finished. He spilled the juice on the couch and he turned the cushion upside down. So you can give him advice. You should have told them about it. You shouldn't have hidden it should have told them the truth. You shouldn't have hidden it to hide, to hide something, to keep it secret. What would you have done? So this is for someone who forgot his, his, his friend's birthday. I would have called him. I wouldn't have sent him a text. So I would have called him. I would have called him immediately. But this is finished. There's something in the past and he didn't call his friend, he forgot his birthday, he didn't call his friend, he just sent, he, he, he sent a text, he sent a message to tell him I'm sorry. So here he regretted. So you can give him an opinion by telling him or a suggestion. I would have called him, I wouldn't have sent him a text. So we use subject would have or should have plus past participle to give opinions or suggestions about something that happened in the past. Now let's get this PowerPoint presentation with Mr. Kyle Ralphson and his channel. Okay, so here we have a boy, and he's thinking, he's reflecting, right? And he's thinking about tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow he has a test. So he's thinking, and he's thinking to himself, I should study. I should study. So this is a suggestion, right, for himself about now or about in the near future, tomorrow, tonight, but he's using the present tense modal to make a suggestion. So just the normal modal and the base form of the verb is the present modal for things now or for things in the future, okay? So today we're going to look at how to make this type of suggestion but in the past tense. Okay. So let's take a look at this situation, okay, over here with this boy, okay, he's playing video games and we're thinking about what he did in the past, okay, and it says here, it says, I didn't study for my test, okay, it says I played video games, okay, so he didn't study for the test, instead he played video games, so what do you think happened when he took the test, what do you think happened to him in the future, well, Maybe this happened, okay? It says, I failed the test, right? 61%, okay? He failed the test, all right? So this is what happened to him. But now let's take a look at the big picture, the big picture of things. So here we are now in the present tense. And the same boy is thinking about what happened to him, right? He's having a reflection. He's thinking about the past. He 
He's having a reflection about the past, about what he did here. He didn't study for the test, he played video games, he failed the test, and now he's thinking about that, okay? So he's thinking about this in a hypothetical way. It's the past, right? Now what is he thinking? Well, maybe he's thinking, for example, hmm, well, I should have studied, right? The reality is that I didn't study for the test. But now he's thinking, well, huh, I should have studied. Or maybe he's thinking, well, I played video games, that was the reality. But now he's thinking, hmm, well, I shouldn't have played video games. Okay? So these are regrets. These are regrets that he has about something he did in the past. Okay? And this is the grammar that we're going to look at today. This grammar is what we call a past modal. Okay? A past modal is for a hypothetical past, right? He's thinking about the past in a different way, and he has a regret about what he did, something he wished he didn't do, or maybe he did do. Okay? So let's take a closer look at this grammar. <clears throat> so this grammar is called the past modal, and it's for the hypothetical past, like we said. Okay? And a past modal basically consists of a modal verb, okay, of some type, then we have the auxiliary verb have, and then we have a past participle, okay? So there's three parts to this. A past modal has three parts. It has a modal, then the auxiliary verb have, then the past participle as the principal verb. So what type of modals do we use? Well, let's take a look. We have three that we use normally, for example, should, could, and would for the hypothetical pasts. Should we use mostly for regrets and suggestions, okay? Could we use for possibilities? And would we use for intentions? Okay, so we use should, could, and would. Should, could, and would, plus an auxiliary have, plus the past participle, and that's the past modal. Now, quickly let's look at some contractions that we can make with our past modals, okay? So, we use the contraction with our modal verb and on our auxiliary verb. For example, should and have, we can put those together and make the contraction should of. Again, repeat with me, should of, should of. Good, and we can make the contraction with could and have, okay? to make the contraction could of. Again, repeat with me. Could of. Could of. Right. And again, we can make a contraction with would and have, and it sounds like this. Would of. Would of. Good. So those are the contractions that we can make with our modal and our auxiliary verb. So let's take a look at and have some, a few examples, okay? Uh, let's set a situation up. For example, <clears throat> there was a party last weekend. There was a party last weekend, okay? So let's look at some ideas that we use with past modals. For example, I didn't go to the party last weekend. And my regret, okay, I'm going to use should. So I say I should have gone to the party. Again, I'm using my modal verb should, my auxiliary verb with have in the contraction here, and the past participle gone. I should have gone to the party. That means I didn't go, but my regret is I should have gone. Or maybe I did go to the party. I did go to the party, but it was a bad idea for some reason, so I can use a negative. For example, I shouldn't have gone to the party. Again, this is the negative with the modal shouldn't, have for the, pa uh, the auxiliary verb, and gone for the past participle, right? So should for the regrets. Let's take a look with possibility. Remember possibility, I use things like could, or maybe the negative couldn't. So maybe it was not possible for me to go to the party. So another way to say this is saying a past modal, I could have gone to the party. Or for example, I have my modal verb could, my auxiliary verb have, and the past participle still, right? Or 
It wasn't possible for me to go to the party. I couldn't have gone to the party, right? So the negative with couldn't, auxiliary verb, and the past participle, right? So possibility, could and couldn't. Now let's take a look at our last ones, okay? For example, with an intention, okay? So it's a hypothetical idea. I would have gone to the party if something else happened. Or I wouldn't have gone to the party if something else had happened. So these right, are about intentions when I use would, okay? But the main idea that you need to understand about the past modal is that you always are using some type of a modal verb, you always are going to use the auxiliary verb have, and you're always going to use some type of a past participle, right? So we always have three parts to this, modal, past participle, or sorry, the auxiliary verb, and number three, the past participle. Okay. So at this time, you need to pause and practice. Okay? So pause the video and do the following exercise. In this exercise, you need to match the information from column A here with column B here. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video. When you're finished and you think you have your answers correct, press play and you can see the answers. Okay, so here are the answers for the previous exercise. So again, if you need to, press pause to check your answers. And when you're finished, press play to continue the video. A. Complete these conversations, then practice with a partner. Of one, two, three, four, start to answer first. You will use, of course, should or would have plus PP. One minute to write to answer. One. The cashier gave me too much change. What should I have? What should I have done? What, what should I have done? You should have. You should have said. Should have said something. You shouldn't have. Should have. Shouldn't have taken the money. Shouldn't have taken the money. Number one answers. Done. Said. Taken. Take. Took the PP taken, past participle taken. Two. I ignored an email from someone, from someone I don't like. I ignored an email from someone I don't like. What would you do? What would you have done? Do the past dead, the past participle done. What would you have done? I would have replied. I would have replied, replied, I-E-D. I would have replied to the person. It just takes a minute. Two answers. Done. Replied. Cross Y. Remove Y and put I-E-D. Three. I was watching a good movie. Film a movie. When my phone rang, what, what, what should I have done? What should I have done? B. You should have taken the call and told, and told the person you'd call back later. Three. B. You should have taken, taken, and told. Three answers. Done, taken, told. Taken, take, present, past, took, pp, taken. Four. We left all our trash at the campsite. What would you have done? Do, the past dead, the pp, done. I would have, I would have taken it with me. Taken. And, Thrown, 
and throw it away later. Taken, thrown. Four answers. Done, taken, thrown. B. Read the situations below. What would you've done? What would have been the best thing to do? What would have been the best thing to do? Choose suggestions, then compare with the partner. So in this exercise, we'll have situations, different situations, different problems, and we have the suggestions here. We try to match the situation, the problem, with the solution or the suggestion. More than one answer is possible. Sometimes for one situation, you can have three answers. Three answers. Situation. The teacher borrowed my favorite book and spilled coffee all over it. So, what would you have done? A. You should have spoken to him about it. B. I would have spoken to the teacher about it. D. I wouldn't have said anything. I wouldn't have said anything. So number one, A, B, D. Two. I saw a classmate cheating on an exam. Cheating. So I wrote her an email about it. B. Solutions or suggestions. I would have spoken to the teacher about it. D. I wouldn't have said anything. E. You should have warned her not to do it again. Not to do it again. Two answers. B. D. E. 3. A friend of mine always has messy hair. Messy, not arrange it. He or she doesn't comb his or her hair with a hairbrush or with a comb. So I give him a comb for his birthday. A comb, be silent. A. You should have spoken to him about it. D. I wouldn't have said anything. I wouldn't have said anything. Maybe he will be sad. So number three, A, D. Four. I hit someone's car when I was leaving a parking lot. A parking lot, an open area to park the car, like a garage. Luckily, no one saw me. I was lucky that nobody saw me. C. I would have waited for the owner to return. I should wait the owner and tell him. D. I wouldn't have said anything. F. You should have left a note for the owner. You should left a note. You should write a paper and write your phone number and name for the owner and put it in his car to pay the damage. 5. My aunt gave me a wool sweater, a sweater which is made of wool, a sweater jumper, British jumper. I can't wear wool, so I gave it back. Suggestions D. I wouldn't have said anything. G. I would have told her that I prefer something else. H. You should have exchanged it for something else. Five answers. D. G. H. C. Group work. Make another suggestion for each situation in part B. So in this here, in this situation, you should have another answer, another opinion. This is going to be group work between you and your friend. 
Page 103, Exercise 9, Pronunciation. Reduction of have. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have is reduced in these sentences. What would you have done? I would have told the truth. Page 103, Exercise 9, Pronunciation. Reduction of have. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have is reduced in these sentences. What would you have done? I would have told the truth. What would you have done? I would have told the truth. Reduction. Reduction of have. Reduction abbreviation. Shortage. Have of like I will I'll. I have I have. I would I had. So these are reductions. Notice how have is reduced in these sentences. Have of like I have I have. What would you have done? What would you have you have? What would you have done? I would have. I would have told the truth. I would have told the truth. I would have told the truth. So you have of like I have I have. B. Per work. Practice the conversations in exercise eight. Part A again. Use reduced forms of have. So try to practice the conversation in eight, but use have as of like I have, I have. Exercise number 10, listening. I'm calling about. Now, look at the picture here. What do you see? A young lady, there is a mic. She has papers, a pen. She's taking notes. She's talking. She's talking in the phone. She's talking in this mic. She has headphones. Who is she? She's a counselor on radio talk show. So she's working as a counselor on a radio talk show, on a radio program. People talk about their problems and the lady tries to solve the problems. She tries to give advice to people. The problem and what the caller did. Caller 1 to 3, we have here three problems and what the caller did. And then in number B, Dr. Hilda will tell us what should each caller have done. Lesson. Page 104, exercise 10, listening. I'm calling about part A. Listen to people calling Dr. Hilda, a counselor on a radio talk show. Complete the chart. This is Dr. Hilda. Welcome to today's show. Now let's get started right away with our first caller. Hello. Hello, Dr. Hilda. I'm calling about my daughter. She's... she's dating an older man. Oh? How old are these two people? My daughter's 24, and this man is 42. Mm-hmm. I told her she had to stop seeing him, and... and now she won't speak to me. I feel terrible. Tell me, Dr. Hilda, what should I have done? First, you should have spoken to this 42-year-old man. You should have asked him not to date your daughter for a couple of weeks, to give the situation some time to cool off. 
Then, if they still want to see each other, and if the man seems like a nice person, you should let your daughter date him. You shouldn't worry so much about the age difference. Okay, now let's go to our next caller. This is Dr. Hilda. Welcome to today's show. Now let's get started right away with our first caller. Hello. Hello, Dr. Hilda. I'm calling about my daughter. She's... she's dating an older man. Oh? How old are these two people? My daughter's 24, and this man is 42. Mm-hmm. I told her she had to stop seeing him, and... and now she won't speak to me. I feel terrible. Tell me, Dr. Hilda, what should I have done? First, you should have spoken to this 42-year-old man. You should have asked him not to date your daughter for a couple of weeks, to give the situation some time to cool off. Then, if they still want to see each other, and if the man seems like a nice person, you should let your daughter date him. You shouldn't worry so much about the age difference. Okay. Caller 1. Problem. What's the problem? Her daughter, the daughter, is dating an older man. She's 24 years old and the man is 42. Her mother told her to stop seeing him. So that's the problem. Daughter is dating older man. Told her to stop seeing him. To stop seeing him. Was the caller dead? She told him to stop seeing him. Now, what about the solution? What about Dr. Helda? This is part B. She should have spoken to the man. She should have asked him not to date her daughter. She should have let her daughter date him and not to worry about age. Do you agree with Dr. Helda? What would you have done? What about you? Do you agree or you don't agree? Tell the class. Caller 2. Okay, now let's go to our next caller. Hello, caller. Hello? Uh, I'm a first-time caller, and, uh, well, my problem is that my father went away on a business trip, and I borrowed his brand new car, and I had an accident. Where is your mother? She's away, visiting some friends. All right, go on. Well... I sent an email to my father and I, I told him, well, I told him someone had stolen the car. Oh, you should have told your father the truth. Your father would probably understand about a car accident and he would be glad you weren't hurt. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. Oh, give it a try, young man, because the truth is always better than a lie. Okay, the age difference. Okay, now let's go to our next caller. Hello, caller. Hello? Uh, I'm a first-time caller, and, uh, well, my problem is that my father went away on a business trip, and I borrowed his brand new car, and I had an accident. Where is your mother? She's away, visiting some friends. All right, go on. Well... I sent an email to my father and I, I told him, well, I told him someone had stolen the car. Oh, you should have told your father the truth. Your father would probably understand about a car accident and he would be glad you weren't hurt. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. Oh, give it a try, young man, because the truth is always better than a lie. Okay. Caller 2, the problem, 
borrowed father's new car and had an accident. So he borrowed his father's new car and had an accident. Was the caller dead? Sent an email to someone had stolen car. Sent an email said someone had stolen the car. What did Dr. Helda advise them? He should have told the truth. He should have told the truth. His father would understand and be glad his son wasn't hurt. Caller 2 Bored his father's new car and had an accident. Sent an email says someone had stolen car. He should have told the truth to his father. His father would understand and be glad his son wasn't hurt. Our next caller. This is Dr. Hilda. You're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling about a problem. It's kind of a personal problem, but it also concerns work. Yes, go on. Well, I invited some friends from the office to my house for a party a couple of weeks ago, and everything was fine until someone started talking about politics. Oh, you shouldn't have let the subject of politics come up. Well, it came up, and I, uh, well, I got really angry at one of my co-workers, and to prevent a fight, I asked him to leave. And what happened after that? Well, now it's caused a big problem in the office. He won't even speak to me. Again, you shouldn't have talked about politics at a party. It's not a safe topic. That's for sure. And you shouldn't have gotten so angry either. That's true, but what should I do now? You should apologize. Well, maybe that's a good idea. I'll give it a try. Good. Well, folks, that's another show. I'm Dr. Hi. Hi. Okay, now let's hear from our next caller. This is Dr. Hilda. You're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling about a problem. It's kind of a personal problem, but it also concerns work. Yes, go on. Well, I invited some friends from the office to my house for a party a couple of weeks ago, and everything was fine until someone started talking about politics. Oh, you shouldn't have let the subject of politics come up. Well, it came up, and I, uh, well, I got really angry at one of my co-workers, and to prevent a fight, I asked him to leave. And what happened after that? Well, now it's caused a big problem in the office. He won't even speak to me. Again, you shouldn't have talked about politics at a party. It's not a safe topic. That's for sure. And you shouldn't have gotten so angry either. That's true, but what should I do now? You should apologize. Well, maybe that's a good idea. I'll give it a try. Good. Well, folks, that's another show. I'm Dr. Hilda. Join us again next time. Caller 3 Problem He had a party where subject of politics came up. Got angry. He got angry at a co-worker and asked him to leave. Again. He had a party. Had a party where subject of politics came up. Got angry at a co-worker and asked him to leave. Dr. Helda, Dr. Helda's advice for caller 3, he shouldn't have talked about politics, shouldn't have talked about politics, he shouldn't have gotten angry, he should apologize. Caller 3, shouldn't have talked about politics, shouldn't have gotten angry, he should apologize. C. Group work. Do you agree with Dr. Helda or what you've done?
11. Speaking. I shouldn't have. Look at five situations below. Think about the past month and write down an example for each situation. So in this exercise, you're going to write about a situation and we should write a regret. Example 1. Something you shouldn't have done. I spent $50 on a t-shirt. I shouldn't have bought it. American bought. I shouldn't have bought it. I don't even like it now. I don't even like it. So why did I why did I buy it? So I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have bought it. Or I shouldn't have bought it in American. Something you should have done. I should have studied English. I went to an interview. Interview and interview. I couldn't speak English well. I couldn't introduce myself. I should have I should have learned it English. I should have taken an English course. Something you shouldn't have said. I was angry. I started to insult my friends. Insult to say bad words. I shouldn't have insulted them. I shouldn't have insulted them. Somewhere he shouldn't have gone. I traveled. I traveled to Kuwait in the summer. It was too hot. I was sick. I shouldn't have traveled to Kuwait in summer. I should have traveled to Kuwait in the winter. I should have traveled to Kuwait in the winter. Someone you should have emailed or called. I forgot my friend's first day. I should have called them. I should apologize. Exercise 12. Writing. A letter to an advice columnist. Write a letter to an advice columnist about a real or imaginary problem. So here you're gonna write to an advice columnist to a journalist who gives advice to his writers, to his readers, to any person who writes a letter to him or an email or a message. Put your letters on the wall and choose one to write a reply to. Dear Dr. Helder, I let a friend borrow my laptop and now it's not working very well. I took it, I took it to a repair shop and they said it they said it would be very expensive to fix. When I asked my friend to help me pay for the repair, she refused. Now, she won't even speak to me. What did I do wrong? What should I have done? Thanks for your help, Kevin. So this is homework. You're going to write to a friend, dear Dr. Helder. You write about any problem with your friend or with anything. You leave two centimeters. You start to write the problem, the problem. At the end, what should I have done? Thanks for your help. And you sign the letter. Exercise number 13, reading, the advice circle. So this is a website. 
you have here skim the three posts on the message board what problem does each writer have so here we have three posts three problems and we have some solutions we have Terry Linda and Robin Terry someone told me that my brother's girlfriend was dating another guy I told my brother and he then decided to confront her confront face to face her with the story to ask her about the story they had an argument they started to discuss it and although she denied the rumor denied the rumor she refused the rumor rumor it means a lie she refused these lies they broke up they end the romantic relationship they don't see each other anymore now it turns out that the rumor wasn't true we discover that the rumor wasn't true and my brother is not speaking to me my brother is very angry he doesn't speak to me so what should I have done so I have here Pexy and Lola Pexy you really learned a lesson didn't you you shouldn't have listened to gossip gossip talking about people while they are not here talking about other people talking about other people now you have to repair the damage you have to solve the problem apologize and hope that he will forgive and forget apologize say sorry and hope that he will forgive and forget another friend don't blame yourself you sincerely tried your best you sincerely you honestly tried your best you did your best but frankly to be honest with you I wouldn't have acted so quickly I would have waited to see what happened try talking to him and good luck try to talk to him and wish you good luck but you shouldn't have acted so quickly you shouldn't believe any rumors and or any lie the second problem with Linda my son is 23 and still lives at home my son is 23 years old and still lives at home he finished college last year so last year he finished university but I really don't think he's trying to get a job and he doesn't get a job he doesn't try to get a job to search for work meanwhile in the same time I've been cooking his meals and doing his laundry I've been cooking his breakfast lunch dinner and washing his clothes and iron them so this is lend the son is irresponsible so this is of course too bad we'll say you're making it you're making it too easy for him to stay home be firm be tough be serious and tell him he has to find the job and get his own place he has to search for work and get a job he's old enough to take care of himself he's old enough he's 23 years old so he has to take care of himself he has to look after himself another opinion portal 
You were his mother. You are the mother. And family is family. It's hard to find a job. It's not easy to get a job if you have no experience. Because your son doesn't have experience, it's hard. It's difficult to find a job. So, don't you have to cook for yourself? Don't you have to cook for yourself? Don't complain about your son. Don't complain about, don't complain about your son. The third one, another opinion, this is a third one, a third problem. Mr. Robin, I saw my friend's brother at the beach with some of his friends. It wasn't a holiday, so I think he was skipping school. He was skipping school. He cut classes. What mean he cut classes? He was skipping school. He didn't go to school and go to the beach with his friends and tell his mom and dad that he, that he goes to school every day. Should I tell my friend? So what should I do? What should I do? Should I tell his elder brother? Zeb, I would suggest you keep your mouth shut. You should shut up. Don't talk. Let them work things out for themselves. Let them. Let them figure their problems. Let them solve their problems. Do not interfere. Don't interfere. It's none of your business. It's not your problem. If you say something, you could damage your relationship. You could damage your friendship with both of them. You will lose your friendship with your friend and his brother. Speedy has another opinion. What are you waiting for? Why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? You should tell your friend right now. You should tell your friend now at the moment. And tell her mom. Tell her, tell her mother. Tell her mother too. The only way to solve your dilemma is to be 100% honest. You should be honest, positive. You should be honest. But for Zeb, he said, you shouldn't be active. You should be passive. It's none of your business. Speedy? No. You should be honest. You should tell the truth. You should be positive. A. Read the message board, match the name and the advice. So here you will have six persons and six advice. Try to match them. This is going to be homework. B. Find the words in italics below in the message board. Then match each one with its meaning. So you should Return and read the message and what is the meaning of the word. 1. Confront. Forgive and forget. Firm. Dalama. A. Make fresh start. Strong and determined. Difficult problem. Discuss in strong direct way. 1. Confront. Face something. So number 1. D. Discuss in strong, direct way. 2. Forgive, forgive and forget. A. Make a fresh start. 3. Firm. B. Strong and determined. 4. Dalma. A difficult problem. Dalama. Dalama. B. Dalama. C. A difficult problem. C. Pair work. 
Which advice do you agree or disagree with? What advice would you give? Now, for for these problems, what advice would you like to give? That's the end of unit number 15. Wish you all good luck. Homework. Number one, keep the words by heart. Two, listen and repeat. Three, answer three pages. And enter change to fourth edition workbook. Unit 15, the last three pages of Unit 15. Four, go to www.cambridge.org, enter change your kid. Finally, watch the video of Enter Change University, of Cambridge University. The video, there is a wonderful video for Enter Change to Unit 15. Wish you all good luck. Finally, if you like it, share it and subscribe. Shukran lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wish you all good luck wa nas'alukum ad-du'a.